lovely yep. day to be in Paris. Uh, certainly, yes. we've got great weather here. So, um, could you tell me a little bit about yourself, Mark, and uh, what you're doing? You've got an event on the 28th yeah, in Edinburgh. Um, just, uh, I'll bring, begin by uh, just introducing myself. Uh, my name's Mark McNaught. I've, for the last couple of years, I have been uh, writing a week, um, roughly weekly column for Newsnet uh, regarding independence issues. I'm a professor of uh, U.S. civilization in Rennes, France, and uh, when I learned that uh, Scotland would be having a referendum and about independence, I immediately recognized what a fantastic possibility this would be to uh, really carve, a, you know, start a, a new uh, political system. You know, as a as someone who's specialized in political science, I'm, it's always fun to well, you know, at least do so much observing and studying. But we, you know, we, uh, in academia, you don't act, get it all, all. You don't often get a chance to actually do anything that. Of, of, of significance other than write a few books and articles and the idea of, of participating in any way in the Scottish independence debate was just an opportunity that I could not uh, possibly give, give up so I've been uh, I've been working with uh, I've been working on an online uh, on a uh, crowdsourced constitution uh, which you can see on the Newsnet website uh, if you go to the Newsnet website and click on um, uh, modern constitutions for a new Scot uh, for a modern Scotland. You can see the text that I have uh, come up with. Among other, there are other texts out there. Who knows what uh, the form of the uh, constitution will be that, that will be ultimately adopted by the Scottish people? But I put that constitution out there because I think it has some interesting ideas, and I've run it by a lot of different academics and other people. Just uh, and I've gotten some good ideas from everywhere. So uh, I encourage you to go have a look at that constitution and see just to get an idea of what could you know what what could be and what more what possible what types of ideas could you put in a, a written constitution that that would really make Scotland uh, really a model of democratic uh, efficacy so Excellent. Um, so, can you tell us a bit about your Edinburgh event? Yeah, what's, yeah, what's going I, I, on with that? It's the second in a series of constitutions for Europe and new European states. We held the first one in February in Geneva, and we ha and I have. Uh, uh, I wasn't able to get as many participants as I'd like, but uh, I was able to get uh, secure uh, Nicolas Lavra, who's the head of the Global Studies Institute at the University of Geneva. He's going to be talking about how uh, ideas on how legally Scotland could continue within the European Union. Uh, you hear a lot on t you hear a lot on the TV. Oh, they'll be excluded. Da, 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 da. When in fact, the, the the there is nothing in the EU treaties that would exclude Scottish citizens as EU citizens from being members of them. And so, they're, they're, he, but he, but there's so much fog in the media over what is true and not, and what is feasible and not. But he would be cutting through a lot of the the BS and you know uh, saying legally how. Um, it could change. We have uh, Sir David Edward, who is a uh, emeritus professor at the University of Edinburgh. Very long, distinguished career. He was a judge within. He was an EU judge as well. He will be talking about the, how the insti how the e European institutions could be reformed in the wake of uh, Scotland or perhaps Catalonia or other uh, parts of nation states who vote for independence and become nation states. And it's something that the EU needs to learn to deal with because you have Scotland, you have Catalonia, you also have um, uh, Venice uh, and, um, and also Flanders who might be pursuing uh, independence in the not too distant future, and if the EU wants to survive, they need to figure out a way to actually adapt uh, in this way, or else uh, they, uh, I think the U U EU could be rent asunder. Uh, so we have David Edward talking about that. Another uh, friend of mine, um, uh, 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 Brent Lloyd, he's from Austin, Texas. He's actually a high school friend of mine, but he's an environmental lawyer in Texas, and he has done a lot of thought about what could be placed in a constitution that would make the uh, environment, make it a be the constitutional tools necessary for the government to properly regulate the environment. Scotland's a beautiful country, and you want to keep it that way. And the more that you can put, you know, effective tools into a constitution to allow it to, you know, to, to properly regulate, uh, for, especially mineral extractions, things like fracking and these other horrific, uh, you know, methods that they're using that, that literally poison the water supply. And in the United States, so it's simply put, the, in, many, in most states, these states don't really have the capacity or the will to regulate it. And so Scotland, you know, in, in becoming independent and 
choosing to put it, you know, in effective methods to make sure that the environment will be properly regulated. This is, of course, very important because of the wind energy potential that you have, and not, and not to mention, of course, the North Sea oil that need to be properly regulated when, uh, when, um, uh, when, when uh, after you become uh, in, after you become independent. Uh, and then myself, I'll be doing uh, two presentations. I'll be doing some commentary on the. Um, on the interim constitution that was put out uh, recently, and I have a, a few uh, things that I'd like to say about it. Uh, and then also at the end, I'm going to be doing a presentation on how the UK could uh, could constitutionally adapt to Scottish independence, because Wales is there, uh, Northern Ireland, and they have a lot of the same grievances that uh, that Scotland has. And the United States had 200 years ago uh, about under Westminster rule, and so I will be speaking about how possibly the uh, the the UK could uh, adapt and make it into a uh, more uh, constitutionally based, um, you know, uh, because it, at, at, at present the UK does not have a written constitution, so it's at the whims of whatever yeah. party is in power at Westminster, and it'd be much better to have something codified with specific powers uh, delegated to the if you know and under what conditions the, the you know under what constitutional arrangements could make the UK a satisfactory arrangement for all of the countries mm. because at, 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 as a present it's currently not, and obviously that's why Scotland is seeking independence. We, we, we really need to get quite a, 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 a lot of people along to your event, don't we, Mark? Yeah, I mean, my uh, goodness. Uh, seats are limited. It will be live streamed. Yeah. There, are still there are still tickets available. So with a link, we'll, we'll, um, uh, we'll put up the link and yeah. uh, please, uh, please come. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, just listening to you there, Mark, you, you covered so, so many things there. So um, if, if you know anybody that's, that's you know, interested in any of the aspects Mark's, Mark's been talk, talking about there, Please get them to come come along, okay? And um, anything else you'd like to add, Mark? Are you um, football about, about about the conference. Well, about the conference. It's this this it's, it's this coming Saturday on yeah. uh, in Edinburgh yeah. uh, at the Quaker Meeting House. Uh, again, I hope I hope you can uh, I hope you can make it. Um, yeah. And uh, again, seat seating is limited. It's only about fifty places. But if uh, again, it will be live streamed and recorded as well. So. It's um, is it ever. Everbright, how are you doing it? Event, 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 right? Yeah. yeah, and yes. uh, have you got a Facebook event up for it yet? Uh, I Mark? haven't put one up yet, but uh, we'll, we'll just put the link up on. Okay, okay, we we'll be we, we'll be putting a link up on our our site. Okay, Facebook and our main website to to the event. It's not up yet, but it'll be going up uh, maybe later today. Okay, so please, if you know anybody interested in this this area, please get them to come along to this event. It's really important. Okay, um, I think we've got people from um, academics for, for independence going along, mm -hmm. so that that's good. Yeah. You know, I don't know for any like, Labour for Indy people, we'll see. or um, you know the Green Party. They should be, have some day along along to this as well. Yeah. You know, so um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this, Mark. Yeah, okay. Uh, what about um, just Slightly off off topic now. Uh, the football. Have you been following the football? Uh, a little bit. Uh, I see that France is doing pretty well. Uh, the, the, the French. The French are happy. I see that uh, England is not doing so yeah. well. And they're going through another uh, national bout of soul searching it's... for a while and uh, trying to. And uh, uh, but um, so I've, I've been following. Yeah. I'm a huge football fan, but I do I do like watching the big tournaments. So. Yeah, su superb, superb. Um, okay, people. Well, you've heard uh, Mark talking there, and I'll just. The beat, jump up and sit next to Mark because <laughs> I've been I've been sitting in uh, that <laughs> and been incredibly uncomfortable. So I'm just going up to see. Oh, wait, Mark! There you go. <laughs> and we're in um, we're in a courtyard. I'll check this out. In the courtyard, pointing in somebody's window. Shouldn't really do that, but. Hey. Okay, so we're, we're not far from uh, the Republic, are we? Uh, the, the well, there's the, um, the, the. I mean, this of course is the capital. We mm. there's the uh, Assemblée Nationale, not mm. far. There's the Elysee Palace, where the president is. Uh, yeah. The president's based, and uh, yeah, it's the seat of uh, seat of government here, certainly. Yeah, I, I, I love Paris. Yeah, it's a great great place. Yeah. Yeah. L luckily, we've got a friend who has a house here. Or <laughs> the wife would be completely cheap flights. Under, yeah. I don't oh, know, it's completely ridiculous. It wouldn't, it wouldn't happen. So, um, okay, people, so we're going to say...
goodbye. I'm trying to think anything else. Remember, uh, it'll be the 28th. It's from 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock till about 3 o'clock oh. uh, at the uh, Quaker Meeting House in Edinburgh this R coming Saturday. Right, okay. I hope, the, I hope the flights will allow me to come. <laughs> yeah, that's true. There's some true. strike going on. Yeah, I'm, it could be that. I might not be making it back. <laughs> Home for a lot of while, which is no bad thing. Well, you're stuck Paris. here. It's not too bad. But um, you know, not so good for Mark. So um, okay, people, uh, I will say goodbye to you and uh, bye to Jordy and Frank and everybody else who's left a comment. Okay, get get tweeting about this event in Edinburgh, please. Right, get get it out there. Okay, okay, mate. We'll soon. Bye bye. Right. Bye bye. Bye bye, bye, -bye for Paris. <laughs>